Here's something we haven't seen in a long time. A family trainer game. The previous one we saw was Totsugeki Fun Takeshi Jo. And this game's a sequel to that. And that previous game was released December 28th, 1987. So it's been a full year. The family trainer was known as the Power Pad in the US, and it was an accessory that let people run on it to basically push buttons for the game. The acrylic with carbon traces that make up the mat are pretty fragile after all this time, so I had to reverse engineer it and build my own with push buttons. As for Fun Takeshi Jo, that was the television show that was exported from Japan as Most Extreme Challenge. A game show where people were put through some wacky obstacle courses. The Takeshi in the title is Takeshi Kitano, film director and star of Takeshi no Cho Senjo and Takeshi no Sengoku Fuunji. This is our fourth and final Takeshi Kitano game that we're going to see on the Famicom. After this, I don't believe he makes another video game appearance until Yakuza 6. Now I actually kind of like the first Takeshi Jo game. It had some creative mini-game designs that we haven't really seen with the Family Trainer. The sequel, on the other hand, is not so good. The mini-games have problems like terrible collision detection, and more confusing control schemes. I still don't know how to win the Tug of War. And while this carries over the same final confrontation with Takeshi from the previous game, it is much, much easier here easier to the point that I would consider it broken. There's fundamentally two game modes here. You can compete in individual events, or you could play in all of them for the chance to defeat Takeshi. How you do in each minigame determines your life bar for the final confrontation. From the menu where Takeshi is talking to you, you hit start to begin a game, and hit select to rotate through things. And select will always bring you back to this screen. So you can exit minigames, though if you're in the full game, Exiting obviously means you get no points. There are nine different mini-games here, and none of them play especially well. First up, you dash up to this line, jump, and try to catch the ring. It's a donut, apparently. You have to jump from behind the line or it doesn't count. Then there's the sumo match. When you start this one, you have to pick up the regular controller and hit A to pick your opponent. Requiring that you use the regular controller to start the minigames is a reoccurring problem here. Here you step on the middle row of the pad, and as you run in place, you're shoving the other player. Moving to the left or right is trying to maneuver around the opponent. You have to fight three sumo matches before the minigame is complete. Then there's this minigame where you're trying to crab walk across a bridge. You have to take a wide stance in this one, and then alternate left and right while dodging those balls that are getting thrown at you. Given how large the balls are, it's tough to get past them. Next up, you have to jump on these rollers. You make your jump, and when you land, it starts spinning, so you have to run in place until it stops spinning. Then you jump again. You can run backwards on this one, but it actually makes it harder. So just use the two middle pads. In this football minigame, you first have to select which defenders are going where on the field, and then you try to run past them. The collision detection on this one is not good, and it winds up just being frustrating. In Tug of War, you have to hit the A button again to randomly pick your opponent. It seems like running in place in the middle pads does something, but it requires some timing that I couldn't get down. So I just kept getting pulled through the gate. In the surfing minigame, you have to jump when the board's below you, and that'll let you land on it. Then you have to crouch by getting down on the front two pads to stabilize the board. After that, you have to jump over some obstacles that don't look like they're in line with you, and run past some people on platforms. If the surfboard gets ahead of you, don't worry, another one will appear in a few moments. In the holes game, one of the holes is the correct hole, and your goal is to avoid the enemy and run into that. And no, you won't know which hole is correct until after you've jumped in. The bad enemy collision from the football game is back for this one, too. And finally, we have the carts. This is a return from the first game, and you hit the pads in the front row to rotate the cart. Hitting the pads to the left and right of you will fire the gun. You can trivialize this minigame by just positioning yourself between the enemies that show up, and driving straight through to Takeshi. 
Takeshi doesn't seem to actively go after you, just wanders around randomly and fires his gun. And he'll get stuck in corners. So it's really easy to beat him. Defeat Takeshi, and you win the whole game. So I found these minigames to be a lot less creative than the ones we saw in the first one, and they didn't seem to be as well designed. There's problems with the visual design, the interface... All in all, it's a sloppy package, and I get the impression that it was just pushed out the door. Especially since we have exactly one more Family Trainer game to go, and it's released a month after this. Bandai probably was just trying to get rid of this thing.